Okay, so um, for this video, we are going to discuss the questions from um, May June 2021, paper 6 1. Right, which is 36 2. Okay, right, so uh, we start with the first question here. Okay, so accidents at two factories occur randomly and independently. On average, the number of accidents per month. Okay, so maybe you can highlight the word per month. So when they give you the average number, which is 3.1. For a certain interval so the per month here will be the certain interval then generally this is for poisson distribution okay and another one is um they give another average up for 1.7 per month also for factory b so all the average number uh, in a certain interval given generally you can conclude that they are from poisson distribution okay so now they want us to find the probability that the total number, okay, so this will be also another keyword, the total number of accidents in the two factories during a two-month period is more than three. Okay, so before you can find the probability, we need to find out the average number for both factories for two-month period. Okay, so please take note that the interval given for the average number, okay, is one month. So they are asking for the probability for two months. Therefore, you need to adjust okay, the average number first or what you call as mean or the lambda before we can calculate the probability. So A plus B, it is still Poisson distributed. Okay, So how you know it's A plus B because of the word total number. All right. So we want to know the total number for both factories. Therefore, it is A plus B. Okay. So to get the um, average number, 3.1 average the mean is 3.1 for a for one month therefore when i want to get the average for two months it will be multiplied with two then plus for factory b it will be 1.7 multiplied with two because the interval asking for the probability is two month two month period right so you take 3.1 multiplied with 2 plus 2.1 or uh, 2 multiplied with 1.7 and you should get a new mean which is 9.6 all right so once you already get the mean then you can calculate the probability so the probability of the total number so the total number should be a plus b of accidents is more than 3 so more than 3 means that greater than 3 Okay, so to calculate the probability for Poisson distribution, when you are having the greater than, actually you cannot uh, get an answer. You have to take one minus because the number for Poisson distribution, right? It can be, um, we can take all the positive integer from zero until infinity. So when you're asking for more than three, right? Then we will have the calculation until a plus b until infinity, which is no, there's no n number. Right, so what we need to do now is we have to take 1 minus the probability of a plus b smaller equals to 3. Okay, so 1 minus, substitute the formula for the Poisson distribution, which is e negative lambda. So the lambda will be 9.6, which is the mean. And then when a plus b equals to 0, it is 1. a plus b equals to 1, it is 9.6. Then when a plus b equals to 2 will be 9.6 square divided by 2 factorial and also 9.6 power 3 divided by 3 factorial. Okay, so because you need to minus a plus b until the 3. Therefore, we will stop here for 9.6 power 3 divided by 3 factorial. Then by just pressing the calculator and correct it to 3 significant figure, you should get the answer which is 0 0.98. Okay, so we come to question number two. Okay, for question number two, um, they mentioned about the time in minutes taken by students to complete a test as a distribution of this one. So I think this is very important. From here, you can see the symbol, which is normally distributed. All right. Okay, then they want you to find the probability that the mean time, okay, so highlight the keyword mean time. So the main keyword here will be the mean. So when you see the word mean time, mean length, mean height, and everything, generally it means sampling distribution. So this is how we know that it is asking for sampling distribution. Alright, okay, so this is a keyword. 
then uh, the mean time taken to complete the test by a random sample of 40 students. So the 40 students here, 40 will be the number of n, is less than 123 minutes. Okay, so which means that this is actually the population. All right, the value for population, which is the mean and also the variance for population. And now you want to calculate the probability for a sample, which is sampling distribution. Okay, so for sampling distribution, before you want to get the probability, you need to know the distribution as well for the sample mean or for the mean time. All right, so you can refer to the formula provided in the formula booklet and we are going to apply this one. This is the sampling distribution for the sampling, distri uh, the, the sampling distribution for the sample mean. Okay, so you need to calculate out the sample mean. Okay, so the mean for a sample mean will be equals to mu, which is actually from the population. It is 125. And you need to get the variance for sampling distribution. So to get the variance for sampling distribution, refer to this one, sigma square is actually the 36 from population. So you should take 36 sigma square divided by n. So what is the n here? It will be 40. Alright, so when you take 36 divided by 40, you should get the variance for sample mean, which is 0 0.9. Alright, so which means that later you want to calculate the probability for the sample mean in normal distribution, right? Okay, um, you need to apply the mean here and also the variance here for the standardization. Okay, so now we want to calculate the probability. So probability, the mean time, so mean time is actually the sample mean, okay, uh, is less than 123 so less than 123 so since the sampling distribution is normally distributed therefore before you calculate the probability you need to standardize it so standardize it is 123 minus the mean minus the mean and divided by standard deviation so you divide it by the standard deviation which is square root 0 0.9 all right and you need to find the probability that z is smaller than negative 2.108. All right, then from the table of the normal distribution, you take 1 minus 0 0.9824. All right, so the 9824, you need to get it from the normal table. All right, provided in the formula booklet. And eventually, the answer that you get should be 0 0.0176. This is already in three significant figures or from the marking scheme, they will accept, accept also the value for 0 0.0175. Okay, so this is the probability for what they want us to find. Okay, right. Then for part B, explain whether it was necessary to use a central limit theorem in, in the solution to part A. Okay, so whether do we need to apply the central limit theorem or not, generally we look at the population. So if you look at this one, the population is already mentioned that is normally distributed. When the population is normal, then we are not using the central limit theorem. So you can write it like this. So the central limit theorem is not used in part A. All right, it is because of the population is normally distributed. So when not, uh, the population is normally distributed, uh, no matter what is the sample size, right? It, the sample mean will be still normally distributed. And therefore, uh, we are not going to apply the central limit theorem to, to state that, okay, to ensure that the sample is normally distributed right because the population is already normal therefore the sample mean will be normal as well uh, regardless to the sample size all right it is normally uh, it is distributed okay so this is how we answer the question two part b okay so we come to question number three right so question number three um they are telling us that uh, the graph of the probability density function of a random variable x is symmetrical Okay, about the line x equals to 4. So um, actually for this question, right, um, we actually don't know what is the shape of this probability density function, and we also don't know what is the function, but uh, we have a very important information here. 
where the graph is actually symmetrical about the line at x equals to 4. So maybe for me, I will just simply draw any curve. Okay, and I will just assume that the symmetrical line is at x equals to 4. Okay, so if, uh, if let's say the value start from 0, right, the probability density function start from 0, then it will end at 8. So you assume something like this now. Uh, Okay, because um, we actually don't know the proper function okay, for this. And also, we also don't know uh, what is the domain for the x. So I will just simply draw a graph that I assume that they are symmetrical at the line y, uh, x equals to 4. Okay, so when you have a probability density function, which is symmetrical at the line, uh, it has a very important characteristic that you need to know where the symmetrical line, will be also equals to the value of mean. Okay, the value of x for the symmetrical line will be also the value for the mean. Okay, so this is um, something important that you need to know before you answer the question. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then now, given that x smaller than 5 is equals to this probability, and they want you to get the probability for x between 3 to 5. Okay, all right, so now, start from here. When they are saying that x is smaller than 5, which means that, let's say I'm having a 5 here, the probability that x is smaller than 5 means the whole area okay, on the left-hand side of 5. And the value is 0 or uh, 20 over 27. So now, maybe I want to find out the probability between 4 to 5, for x between 4 to 5. Okay, so if I want to find out this area, which is between 4 to 5, it is equal to 20 over 27 for x smaller than 5 minus the purple color area here. So this purple color area here is actually half of the whole graph, right? Half area of the whole graph, which is equals to 1. So the half area here should be equals to 0 0.5. And therefore, I minus 0 0.5. Okay, so from here, I know that this area, the red, red color shaded area, should be equals to 13 over 54. Okay, all right. And after that, from this question itself, they actually want us to find out the probability for x between 3 to 5. Okay, so again, 3 will be here. And you should know that now this green color area from 3 to 4 and from 4 to 5, these two areas are the same. Because this whole graph is symmetrical at line x equals to 4. Therefore, the area from 3 to 4 and the area from 4 to 5 should be equal to each other. Alright, so to get the answer for x between 3 to 5, it is actually 2 times of the probability from x to from 4 to 5. Which means that you are taking 2 multiplied with 13 over 54. And eventually, the answer that you get for this one should be 13 over 27. Or you can change it to 3 significant figure, which is 0 0.481. Alright, and this is how we get the answer for the area between x equals to 3 to 5. Between x from 3 to 5. Okay, so question number 4. We have 100 randomly chosen adults and each throw a ball once. Okay, so the 100 here will be actually the n, right, the sample size. Okay, then um, they are collecting all the data about the length, okay, in L meters for each throw is recorded. So these are all the summarized data. Okay, so we are having n equals 100, summation of L equals to 3280, summation of L squared equals to 182200. Okay. Alright, so now, they want us to calculate the 94% confidence interval for the population mean length of throws by adults. Okay, so first of all, we need to know how to get the confidence interval. What is the formula that we need to apply for this confidence interval? 
Okay, so the confidence interval for mean formula will be sample mean minus the z multiplied with sigma divided by square root n. Okay, another one, the other value will be upper limit will be sample mean plus z multiplied with sigma over the square root m. So please take note that these formulas are not provided in the formula booklet. Alright, okay, so before we can calculate the confidence interval, we need to find out which is the which value that we don't have at first. Okay, so sample mean, x bar means sample mean. So sample mean, we can take it very easily from summation of L divided by N because um, this is actually a value for the sample. Okay, then the value of Z, we can get it by using the 94% given in the question. N is given, which is 100. And now our problem is we actually don't have the value for the sigma, which is the population standard deviation. Okay, so we need to get the population standard deviation first. And from the data given here, you will see that they actually didn't provide us the pro, uh, the value for pro, uh, population variance or population standard deviation. They only give us all the data about the sample. So to get the population standard deviation or the population variance, we need to estimate the value first okay, by using all the data in the sample here. Therefore, we actually need to apply the unbiased estimated formula to get the unbiased estimated population variance. So this is the unbiased estimated population variance formula that we can apply here. Alright, so from here you can see that summation L square summation x squared is summation l squared in our question. Then summation x, the whole thing squared, which is summation l, the whole thing squared. So you can use this formula to estimate the population variance first. All right, so let us start. Okay, so first we will need to calculate the unbiased estimated variance. Alright, and the formula is 1 over n. So 1 over n minus 1 means 1 over 99. Okay, then multiply with summation x squared, which is 182200 minus the L 3820 squared divided by 100, which is n. Okay, and after that, you will get the value 12092 divided by 33. So for me, I would strongly suggest you to keep your answer in a fraction form. Okay, don't cut it short to three decimal places or three significant figures yet because this is not our final answer yet. Okay, then after that, when you want to get the answer for 94% confidence interval, all right, then you apply everything into the formula. So summation, they want to get the sample mean. So sample mean means 3820 divided by 100 minus the z. The value of z here will be 1.881. You can use also 1.882. Alright, both are correct. If you get the value from the normal distribution table, right, you should refer the probability, the value of z for 0 0.97. So you get the value of z, which is 1.881 or 1.882. Then the sigma. Sigma, you should use this formula now. The unbiased estimated variance. Okay, so the sigma will be the square root of the variance, which is 12092 divided by 33 over n, so which is 100. Alright, so you just need to input all the value correctly. Okay. So one side is minus, another one is a plus. The upper limit will be the plus. And eventually from here, you should get the answer, which is 36, uh, sorry, 34.6 and also 41.8. Okay, so our 90%, 94% confidence interval for mean will look something like this. Okay, so I have correct it to three uh, significant figures. Okay, okay, so we come to question number five. Okay, on average, there's one in seventy-five thousand adults has a certain genetic disorder, right? So, 
the one in 75,000 uh, generally is telling us something like the percentage uh, or the proportion okay, of adults that have a certain genetic disorder. So use a suitable approximating distribution. So I think this is one of the important keywords here. Okay, to find the probability that in a random sample of 10,000 people, at least one has the genetic disorder. Right, so um, generally, right, for this question itself, uh, at the beginning, it should be lost to binomial distribution because you are having a total sample of 10,000 people and they want to see how many of them, uh, they want to see the probability for at least one of these people having the genetic disorder. So, which means that I'm having the P, which is 1 over 75,000. And um, in our syllabus for A2, all right, for binomial distribution, we can change it to another discrete random variable, which is Poisson distribution. All right, so to get the Poisson distribution formula, the mean here, it should be 10,000. Okay, so maybe I write it here, all right, to have more space. So to change it become Poisson distribution to get the lambda or the mean for Poisson, you need to take n from binomial multiply with p. So it is n times p to get the mean. All right. So the mean here should be equals to um, 2 over 15. So this is the lambda for the Poisson distribution. Okay, and 2 over 15 will be the lambda. All right, then you can verify also whether is this correct or not. When you want to change binomial become poison, right? The first thing is you need to have a large n, which is more than 50. And the second condition is np must be smaller than 5. So you can see that 2 over 15 is smaller than 5. All right, so uh, this is uh, the, the condition uh, that we are changing the binomial to poison distribution. So for the probability y, they want us to calculate the probability for x greater equals to 1. So again, for Poisson distribution, x greater equals to 1 means that you start from x equals to 1, x equals to 2, and then x equals to infinity. All right, which is uh, impossible for us to get the answer. Therefore, we have to take 1 minus x smaller than 1. So x smaller than 1 should be include x equals to 0 only. All right. So 1 minus for Poisson distribution, okay, the formula is E negative lambda. So lambda will be 2 over 15 multiply with lambda power R. So power R means 0 divided by 0 factorial. Okay, so for this one, by just pressing the calculator very easily, you should get the answer. And I have changed it that the answer to three significant figure where it should be 0 0.125. All right, so this is the first part that we have for question number five. All right, okay, then now we can continue to question B, part B for question number five. Okay, so now, instead of telling you how many people in the random sample, we now don't know the number. So we only know that there's a random sample with N people, where N is large, they already uh, mentioned here that N is large. The probability that no one has the genetic disorder is more than 0 0.9. So this sentence itself generally is a useful information to let you start to answer the question. Okay, then they want you to find the largest possible value of n. Okay, so for this question, generally, once I see that the n is large, huh? okay, of course, originally it is still binomial, but since I see the word n is large, huh? I will change it to poison as well. Okay, where it is n divided by 75,000. How I get this one? It is actually n multiplied with 1 over 75,000, like what we did in part A. Okay, here. Alright, so we change the 10,000 become the n, therefore the lambda will become n divided by 75,000. So I will still assume that it is poison distributed. Okay. Then the information given here is the probability that, so the probability that no one, so no one means x equals to 0, has the genetic disorder more than 0 0.9. So the probability is more than 0 0.9. So that's why I mentioned that this sentence is actually a question or a very useful information to let you start how to answer the question. Okay. 
Right, so by using this information, now I want to answer the question, how to write out the probability for x equals to 0? Okay, so the for Poisson distribution, x equals to 0 means e negative lambda. So it will be n divided by 75,000. This is the lambda. Okay, then I'm having lambda power 0. So this is lambda power 0 divided by 0 factorial and it is more than 0 0.9 okay so please take note that 0 factorial is a 1 anything power 0 it is also equals to 1 okay therefore we left only e power negative n over 75,000 so to get the n over 75,000 I take long both sides and I pull the number in front it will become n divided by 75,000 multiplied with ln e, it will be greater than ln 0 0.9. Okay, and again, the value for ln e will be equals to 1 as well. So to get the value for n, okay, I bring the negative 75,000 over, become negative 75,000 multiplied with ln 0 0.9. Okay, all right, so by just pressing the calculator, the value that you get here when you multiply it will be 79 or uh, 7902.038674. Okay, and n must be a uh, integer, la. all right, so smaller than 7902, then n should be equal to 79. Zero two. All right. Okay. So this is our answer for the end. Okay. And then um, there's one point you need to be aware here is this one. Okay. Can you see that from this step we are having greater than originally, and after that we change it to smaller than. It is because of we multiply a negative value, we are bringing it over. Okay, so therefore we need to change the inequality sign. Okay, so this is actually the method number one that they are using the Poisson distribution to answer the question. Okay, so for some students, they might consider that uh, although n is large, but we actually don't know whether the n is large enough to fulfill, to change it become the po to change the binomial become Poisson or not. Therefore, there are some students they might use the binomial distribution to solve this question. Okay, which is also uh, you can still also get a very similar answer. Lah. Right, so here I will show you these methods. How about if let's say you want to use binomial distribution to solve this? Okay, so again, we are having the binomial distribution and we are not going to change it become Poisson. So we are still using the same value here, which is x equals to zero greater than 0 0.9 so when x equals to 0 what is the formula for this binomial distribution so you should have n c 0 p power 0 so 1 over 75,000 power 0 multiply with 74999 over 75,000 this is the q right power n and it is greater than 0 0.9 Okay. All right. So again, the same thing happened here. No matter what is the value for n, as long as it is positive value, positive integer, uh, whether you have two c, uh, two c zero, three c zero, whatsoever zero, it is always equals to one. Therefore, this value p power zero, it is also always equals to one. Therefore, I left only this term. And if I want to find out the n, I will take log both sides also, or log both sides also can. Okay, so if you want, you can take log. Lah. If you want, then you just take log also, no problem. Up to you, okay? Both will give you the same answer. Okay, so greater than log 0 0.9. So when I bring it over, then I will have log 0 0.9 divided by log 74999 divided by 75,000. Okay, then again, please take note on this part. 
originally is greater than, but after I move the value over, it becomes smaller than. The reason is because of this value is a negative value. It's a negative value. Therefore, you bring it over, you have to change the sign for the inequality. All right. Then after that, by just pressing the calculator also, you will get the answer. Okay, for n smaller than uh, a particular value here. So I will try to calculate it out. You should get 7901.985994. And again, n must be a positive integer. Therefore, the integer will be 7901 for the value of n. So if you use binomial distribution to solve this question, the answer is a bit different, which is 7901. And please take note that uh, both answers are accepted in the marking scheme program. Okay, so we come to question number six, and they give us the probability density function, and it's given like this. Okay, where k is a constant. So the question uh, they are asking is state the value of dx. Okay, that means they want you to state the value of mean and show that the variance equals to this value. Alright, okay, so um, at first, when they ask us to state the value of dx, and that means without calculation, right, you can straight away mention the value for um, mean, okay, for this example, for this question. Okay, so maybe you need to uh, figure out how are we going to state the value of x. Oh, of mean, sorry. Okay, so at first you look at the probability density function. Okay, and you will realize that the function here can be rephrased as fx, it is equals to k, then x, then 6 minus x. All right, so now uh, you need to apply a little bit of the mathematical knowledge, uh, mathematics knowledge that we learned before in quadratic equation. When you are having negative x squared, the negative here tells you that the quadratic parabola is something like this with the n shape, not the u shape. If positive, then it is u shape, right? So we are having the n shape here with x squared. So x squared, you know that it is quadratic. Okay. So this is the first thing that you know. Okay. And the second thing is when you try to factorize it, right? And you let fx equals to 0, you have x equals to 0 and x equals to 6, which means that the x-intercept will be 0 and also the 6. Okay, so if you try to state, or maybe when you try to figure out or, state, uh, or sketch out the graph for this probability density function, it will look something like this. 6 and 0. And for quadratic equation, right, or quadratic expression, it should be symmetrical to each other. So which means that the 3 will be the symmetrical line. For this function. Alright, okay, so what is the value, the highest value here? I don't know, but I just know that the x intercept will be 0 and 6. And then uh, since it is symmetrical, okay, for the uh, quadratic graph, therefore I know that x equals to 3 will be the symmetrical line. Okay, so from here you can straight away state because we learned the characteristic before, right? Okay. When you are having a probability density function which is symmetrical in graph, then the symmetrical line okay, will be the mean. So mean equals to 3. Alright, so this is why we can actually just take the value up right, for the mean value. Okay, mean for the x here. Alright, okay. Then after that, now they want us to show that variant x equals to 9 over 5. Okay, before we can show them the variant, the value of the variance x, we need to find out the value for k first, that's the constant here. Okay, so um, we need to figure it out. Okay, so how can we find out the k? So to find the k, we can apply one important properties where when you integrate from 0 until 6, that means you integrate the whole domain, okay, for the function given you should get the area under the graph which is equal to 1 or the probability equals to 1 because it denotes the whole function, the whole area that we consider. 
All right, so k is a constant. I will take it out. Then I try to integrate 6x and also x squared. So 6x integration, I will get 3x squared. For x squared, the integration, I will have x power 3 divided by 3. Then I want to substitute in the value for 6 and also 0, which is equal to 1. Uh, then I will have k 108 minus 72. It is equal to 1 as well. And therefore, the k will give you the value 1 over 36. Okay, but of course, this is not the ending point yet because we eventually want to get the value for gradient x. Once I get the k, the next step is I want to get the value for e x squared, the expected value for x squared. So to get the expected value for x squared, you also in, it also involves the integration from 0 until 6. Right, so for x squared here, you need to multiply x squared with the function first before you carry out the process of integration. So I'm having the 6x minus x squared here. Alright, so you can see that I'm multiplying the x squared before I apply any integration. Alright, then I will take out all the constant. This is my habit, right? So I will take out all the constant and multiply in the x squared together becomes 6x power 3 minus x power 4. Alright. Okay, then I will continue from here. 1 over 36. After the integration, I will have 3x power 4 divided by 2. Then minus x power 5 divided by 5. Okay, and of course, I need to substitute in the value 6 and 0. Okay, so if I didn't do any careless mistake, then you'll get the value 54 over 5. Alright, then again, this is not yet the value of variance of x yet. To get the value of variance of x, the formula is e x squared, the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x. Then you square it, which is 54 over 5 minus 3 squared. Alright, and from here sh should then be a problem for you to get the value 9 over 5. Okay, so this is how we prove that the value of the variance x is equal to 9 over 5. Okay, so question number 7. They give you the masses in kilograms of large and small sacks of flour. Okay. And they are telling you that both of them are having the distribution, the normally uh, the normal distribution. Okay, so maybe for the first one, we will I will maybe write here. This one is the L, the large um sacks of flour, and the second value here will be the S, the small one. Okay, so L denotes the large one, and S denotes the small one. Okay, so for part A, uh. We take some sacks loaded onto a boat and then the maximum load for the flour that the boat can carry safely is 340. So the limit that the boat can carry is 340 kilo, kilogram. They want you to find the probability that the boat can carry safely three randomly chosen last sacks of flour and also six randomly chosen small sacks of flour. Okay, uh, so which means they are talking about the total lah. three randomly chosen large ones. So it will be three L plus six S. Okay, but to be more accurate, right? The three packs of large one uh, should be actually L one plus L two plus L three. Alright, to be accurate. Then for six S here will be six uh, sorry X S one plus S two until S6, which means that it is actually the addition for each of the flower. Alright, but I make it shorter, so I just straight away write it as 3L plus 6S, but to be accurate, it should be something like this. Okay, and then now I want to get the mean and also the variance for this new variable here. Okay, to get the new mean, it should be 3 times of 55. Okay, the mean for L plus the 6 min for s, which is 27. 
okay and then from here you will get the mean which is 327 okay so this is the mean for 3l plus 6s uh, or in more accurately it should be something like this okay and then for the variance it should be 3 multiplying with the variance of l plus 6 multiplying with the variance of s and for this part, you will get the answer 64.5. Okay, and please take note about the coefficient okay, of the variance here. We are not going to square the 3 and also to square the 6 because we are having the addition of the variable, not multiplication. Therefore, when you're having the addition for the variable, we are only need to multiply the coefficient not to square and multiply the coefficient not to square the coefficient and multiply with it understand that? so we are not going to square the three and also we are not going to square the six because of we are having all the addition of variable not multiplication all right so we have two important values here that you need to know for the calculation later which is 227 is the mean 64.5 will be the variance all right okay so now what they want us to calculate now they want us to calculate the probability that the 3l and 6s can carry by the boat okay that the boat can carry safely so that means uh, the 3l plus 6s haven't exceed the limit of the 340 so it should be 6 uh, 3l plus 6s smaller than 340 Okay, and after that, you should calculate the probability. Lah. So, before you want to calculate the probability, you should standardize it become that. Because you know that this variable is belongs to normally distribution. Okay, so 340 minus the mean. So, minus 327 divided by standard deviation. So, the standard deviation should be square root 64.5. Then um, we will have the value of z, which is 1.619. Then by referring to the normal distribution table provided in the formula booklet, you should get 0 0.9472. And if you want, you can change it to 3 significant figure, which is 0 0.947. Okay, so this is the answer for part A in question 7. Right. Okay, then now let us proceed to part number B. Okay, so for part number B, this is what we have. Again, they are still asking us to find the probability that the mass of randomly chosen large. Okay, so a large sack of flour. So that means we are having one L. Okay, greater than. So greater than. The total, so again, total mass of two small sacks of flour, so that means x, s1 plus s2. La. Okay, but again, to be accurate, it should be s1 plus s2, but for me, I'll write as 2s. La. But for me, I know that the 2s here are actually the addition of s1 plus s2, s1 and s2. All right, so I write as 2s. So when they want you to calculate the probability for this one, you cannot get the answer. You have to change all your variable to one side. Okay, and therefore to calculate this probability, we need to get the mean and variance for L minus 2s. Okay, so again, we will start here L minus 2s. They are still normally distributed. Again, um, I want to emphasize here that the 2s here should be s1 plus s2. It is the addition for 2s all right okay to get the mean so how to get the mean it will be the mean of l which is 55 minus two times the mean of s which is 27 okay so 55 and 27 you get it from the question on above and on top right so uh, for this part you should get the value one then to get the variance it should be the variance of L, which is 3 squared, then plus 2 multiplied with the variance of S. 
which is 2.5 squared and you should able to get um, 21.5 okay and again please take note about the coefficient of 2 here you can see that because it is the addition of 2s okay s1 plus s2 therefore I didn't square the coefficient when I want to get the variance so the coefficient I remain as a 2 and the second thing is if you look at the sign it is l minus 2s but for variance it is always positive there's no negative sign okay so for variance part it should be always positive therefore it is plus here okay so the two important values here for us to apply later for the calculation of population will be uh, for the priority will be one which is the mean and also 21.5 which is the variance all right okay so now we will proceed with the calculation for the probability okay so they want us to calculate l greater than 2s and we already know that we should move all the variable to one side which is l minus 2s greater than 0 l minus 2s is normally distributed therefore i change it become that so to change it becomes that or to standardize it we need minus the mean you take the zero minus the mean divided by the standard deviation so which is 21.5 all right then from here you will get the value of z which is greater than negative 0 0.16 and this area is similar with z smaller than 0 0.216 okay so again, from the normal distribution table provided in the formula booklet, you will get 0 0.5855. Or to be more accurate, you can change it become three significant figure, which is 0 0.586. All right, so this is the answer that I get. Okay, and then uh, please take note also in the marking scheme, they actually accept 0 0.585 also. Okay, so we are coming to the very last question, which is question number 8. Okay, so at a certain large school, it was found that the proportion of students not wearing correct uniform was 0 0.15. So I think here the keyword will be the proportion of not wearing the correct uniform. Okay, and 0 to uh, 0 0.15. And then the school sent letter to parents to ensure their children wear the correct uniform. And now they want to test whether the proportion of not wearing correct uniform has been reduced. Okay, so I think you need to highlight the keyword reduce. This is the keyword telling you about forming the alternative hypothesis later if they are asking you to test, to run the test. Alright, so the keyword reduce, reduce means smaller than. Okay, so it's actually an important keyword lah, for you to set up your alternative hypothesis. Okay, so it is suggested that a random sample of the student in grade 12 should be used for the test so give a reason why this would not be an appropriate sample all right um they only focus on the students of from grade 12 uh, to be taken as a sample so very obvious uh, for the students of grade 12 only it cannot represent the whole school right okay so you can tell them the reason okay um students in grade 12 do not represent of all students in the school so to me it is not a random it is not a good random sample right because it cannot represent the students from whole school right okay Okay, so now, part number B, a suitable sample of 50 students is selected and the number of not wearing correct uniform is noted. Okay, then the figure is used to carry out a test at a 5% significance level. So first, uh, part B, they ask you to state the suitable now and alternative hypothesis. Okay, right, so um, very obvious already that they give you the proportion. They give the keyword reduce and now they want you to form the now and alternative hypothesis. So they want you to test the proportion of not wearing the uniform correctly. So for now hypothesis, it is always P equals to 0 0.15.
okay and alternative hypothesis will be something that they want you to prove or to test so reduce means p smaller than 0 0.15 okay so how i know it's smaller because of the keyword reduce given in the question right okay so this is my alternative and now hypothesis all right then next for part C, they want you to use a binomial distribution to find the probability of a type 1 error. So you must justify your answer fully. Okay, so uh, for binomial distribution, you know that when you want to test, run the test for the P, right, the proportion, generally we are using the binomial distribution. So we need to know the N. So the N value will be 50 here. Okay, so binomial distributed 50 and the proportion is 0 0.15 and there's another important figure here which is 5% the significance level will be 5% and we, we are going to use this 5% okay, to um, as a reference value lah, to find out the type 1 error okay all right so now um when we are having binomial distribution for 50 and 0 0.15, right? So some students will tell me that we can change it, become normal distribution and stop it. Okay, but the problem now is the question already mentioned clearly that uh, we have to use a binomial distribution to find out the probability of a type 1 error. So you shouldn't change it, become normal distribution. Okay, so we will stick back to the binomial distribution for the calculation under this one. Okay, so this is a, a one tail test on the left, smaller sign, right? The smaller sign here, telling you that this is a one tail test on the left. Therefore, I want to find out, okay, what is the type one error or where is the critical region? Okay, so you should start from x is small equals to zero, all right? But I know that x smaller equals to zero shouldn't be an answer. So I start from x smaller equals to one. For binomial distribution will be 50 C0, 0 0.15 power 0, 0 0.85 power 50. Then plus 50 C1, 0 0.15 power 1, 0 0.85 power 49. Okay, and by just pressing the calculator, try to get the answer for this x smaller equals to 1, which is 0 0.00291. So once you get this value, you try to compare it with the significance level, which is the alpha. So the alpha is 0 0.05, agree or not? So the value, P value that you calculate here is smaller than the alpha. So which means that uh, X smaller equals to 1 is under the rejection region. Then now we want to check and see whether X smaller equals to 2 is also under the rejection region or not. So by using the value from here, okay? You add 50C2, just until 50C1, right? So you take this answer plus 50C2, 0 0.15 power 2 and so on. Then you will get the value 0 0.0142. Again, try to compare it with the significance level alpha, which is 0 0.05. So it is still smaller than. So that means x smaller equals to 2 is still under the rejection region. Okay, then we continue for x smaller equals to 3. Then again, you use the answer for this part and add 50 C3, 0 0.15 power 3, 0 0.85 power 47. Then for this part, you get 0 0.0460. Again, you compare it with the alpha, it is still smaller than significance level, which is 0 0.05. So that means x equals to 3. Okay, the value itself, it is still under the rejection region. Okay, then we continue again for x smaller equals to 4. Okay, so for x smaller equals to 4, if you calculate the probability, it will be 0 0.112. And if you compare it with alpha, it, uh, it is already more than 0 0.05. Okay, so when you want to calculate the probability okay for type 1 error or maybe to find out the rejection region for this binomial distribution right you have to check the value one by one until you get the compare you get the value which is the p value which is more than alpha then you stop okay so that means what that means 
all these value here are under the rejection region. But for x equals to 4, start from x equals to 4, it belongs to defaults under the acceptance region already. Or maybe we can talk about it like this. We are having 0 until 50. Alright, so maybe this is your alpha. Okay, so your alpha is 0 0.05. Okay, when you do the calculation, x more equals to 1, right? They tell that x 1 is under the rejection region. All this part is rejection region, right? Then 2 is also rejection region. 3 is also rejection region. But when you try to calculate x equals to 4, the 4 already falls under the acceptance field. Alright, so from here, very obvious, you can see that 1, 2, and 3 are rejection region or critical region. Then x equals to 4 onwards it will become the acceptance region okay but now our focus is on the type 1 error so the type 1 error is what type 1 error is the value okay the probability okay that is before you get the acceptance region all right before the value that's more than alpha so which means this is your type 1 error so you can write it out as type 1 error is equals to 0 0.0460 and then the marking scheme actually affect the 0 0.0461 okay and usually now usually for the type 1 error the answer is very close to alpha will be very close to alpha because Alpha is taken based on type 1 error as well. For normal distribution, the type 1 error equals to alpha. But for binomial, it is a bit different. It will be slightly different because binomial is discrete. Therefore, we are um, looking for the p-value, which is very, very close to alpha. All right, the, the closest value, the closest p-value compared with alpha and smaller than it. So the type 1 error here will be 0.460. Alright, and then uh, just a uh, head up means that when you calculate all the steps here, right, it also tells you that 0, 1, 2, 3 falls under the critical region, and then 4 until 50 falls under the acceptance region. Okay, alright, then now we can proceed further. Okay, let's have a look for question number D. Okay, so for question number D, they are telling you that um, four students out of the 50 are not wearing correct uniform. So what is the conclusion of the test? Explaining your answer. Okay, so the value here is x equals to 4. So if you look at the graph that we draw just now, x equals to 4 falls under the acceptance region. Or falls outside. The rejection of critical region. Okay, all right. So what is the conclusion here? If it falls under the acceptance region or outside the rejection region, that means we do not reject the null hypothesis, which means there's no evidence to. Um, show that the proportion of the students not wearing uniform correctly or correct uniform has been reduced. Okay, so why? Why is the reason? So the reason is because x equals to 4 falls outside the rejection region. So you can write it like this. Huh? This is the reason. Or maybe some students might want to write this as um, because of the probability for x smaller equals to 4, okay, is equals to 0 0.112.
which is already more than the alpha, which is 0 0.05. So this is another reason also you can write it other way, either way. Alright, okay. So actually from part C, they already tells you, okay, uh, when x equals to 4, you should start to accept, okay, or do not reject the null hypothesis. Alright, so this is uh, our answer for part C. Okay, so the answer for us is do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so let's continue with the last part here, part E. For this question, they are asking, state with the reason which of the errors type 1 or type 2 have might uh, may have been made. Okay, so usually for this kind of question, you have to look at your decision. So your decision is do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, for type 1 error, the definition is um, reject the null hypothesis given that null hypothesis is true. For type 2 error is do not reject the null hypothesis given that the null hypothesis is false. So we do not reject the null hypothesis, right? Therefore, the possible error that we will make here, we might make here is type 2 error. Okay, so what is the reason due to the reason? Or due to the conclusion that we made in part D, okay, that we are not rejected, not rejecting the null hypothesis. So that's why we might make the type two error. All right. So here we ended this um set of question papers.